So I want to start off by saying welcome back to the channel. Aaron, if you're new here, welcome. If you're a fanatic of everything entertainment, then this is the channel for you. But in today's movie review, we'll be talking about 1965's Invasion of the Astro Monster. So let's get into it. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to start off with my negatives and work my way up to the positives. So my first negative is the pacing. While I don't mind a film with a good story, I can, for the most part, look past, you know, scenes that might drag. Um, but there's maybe 10 minutes worth of kaiju scenes in here throughout the entire film. 10 minutes out of an hour and a half, hour 45 film. 10 minutes is all we get. That's pretty lackluster, to be honest. And I'm hoping the new Godzilla X Kong, you know, has at least like an hour's worth of kaiju scenes. That would be honestly awesome. Um, but there's only like 10 to 15 at most in this film. And I just, I wasn't a fan of that. I think it honestly takes like 35 to 40 minutes for any kaiju monsters to show up outside of Ghidorah. Like our introduction to Godzilla and Rodan in here is them in a catatonic state while they're being transported. And I, I thought that was like really disrespectful in a way. I thought it was really lackluster and just not worthy of my time. Uh, it just really, really pales in comparison to other films when you see Rodan and Godzilla show up. They only sprinkle kaiju scenes in here like every 10 to 15 minutes after our introduction. And even then, those scenes are very brief and lackluster as well. Also, all the scenes that have to do with the aliens and Planet X are sort of hard to take seriously because of their costumes. It looked really goofy. You know, at times, you know, I did get used to it, but every time they showed up, me and my wife would both laugh our ass off at just the design. They're like... That's what they want us to take seriously. It was very hard to do so. While this ain't the worst costumes I've seen from the time, if you want your villains to be an actual threat, this ain't it. Once again, King Adora just flies away after being seemingly defeated. I'm not a fan of that. That was just... They really copied the same ending from the previous film, and even then, that ending was very lackluster, and they do it again. It's the same exact... Uh, way that he flies away. I don't know if it's the same scene of him flying away, but it was just I Don't know it was it just felt like a slap to the face because like I said before it was already lackluster and they just wanted to do it again. I Know like I said before this is King Ghidorah's movie, but if that's how you're gonna end things, you know You know, he's gonna come back in a future film because like like I said before if it's not on earth It's gonna be on a different planet and he's gonna commit more chaos and something else I want to mention, I did watch the 1970 American dub of this because this was the only one I could find with decent picture quality. Um, but yeah, the American dubbing in here was just atrocious. Um, but, you know, sometimes it worked with the characters, but a lot of the dubs just didn't really fit the characters and the actors uh, in here. But with that being said, let's move on to the things that I mixed on with this film. As I mentioned before, the 1970 American dub, you know, it was something that is both in the mixed and negatives for me because when it when those dubs are really bad, of course, they're going to be put in the negatives. Um, but some of them did work for certain characters and actors, not all of them. Um, but, it, you know, it, I guess it was a decent translation, but it wasn't great. Especially that of the voice actor who portrayed Tetsuo. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, but his lines and delivery were a bit much for me. But he just sounded familiar and I can't quite put my finger on it. So if you guys know, let me know. And then we have other cases of voice actors who have way too deep of a voice uh, for the characters that they're portraying in here. But everyone else does a decent job in here. And the dub is a little bit better than that of Godzilla Raids again, if I'm being honest. Which is notorious for a lot of people, but I didn't entirely mind it. I'm also mixed on the fact that, you know, we get a kaiju fight scene like three or four minutes before the credits roll after the aliens uh, get destroyed. Like, there's three minutes left of the film. Whatever you're going to put in there is not going to pay off for me. It just felt worthless at this point because it was pretty unsatisfactory for me. Once again, I am mixed on the designs of our kaiju in here. While there was a lot of effort put into these suits and designs, I think both Godzilla's and Rodan's uh, designs could have been a lot better. Um, they could have been improved quite a bit from the previous film, but... I'm used to it at this point. Speaking of the kaiju, I already brought this up once. I am mixed on the kaiju fight scenes in here because 
you know, I don't get too much enjoyment out of them, but there is enjoyment to be had in these scenes, especially since this is the film where we see Godzilla do his little dance, and it cracks me up every time I watch it, regardless if it's a movie review or, like, the film itself, when they put that clip on. Uh, I just found it hilarious, and I think this is the only film that does that. I wish he did that in other films, because it was quite hilarious. I find there to be a lack of choreography in these scenes. You know, I guess they just rolled with it. I don't know if that's how Toho does it. They're just like, do whatever you want, but it didn't really work well with me. Uh, there wasn't much choreography to be had, but then again, I guess there could be an argument to be like, they're monsters, there's not going to be choreography anyway, but I just found there to be a lack of choreography, and you know, something I was mixed on, because like I said, I do get enjoyment out of some of these scenes, but not all of them. But with that being said, let's move on to the things that I do like about this film. I do think that this story in here is worthy of having all these kaiju monsters in here. To be honest, I was digging like the first 15 to 25 minutes. Because the aliens betray Earth by having us agree to giving them Godzilla and Rodan um, in order to defeat Ghidorah and in turn they'll give us the cure to all disease. But it turns out that they want to use all three kaiju monsters against us and take over the planet. Which is a nice change of pace to be honest. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. Like I said, it's a worthy story of having all of these kaiju monsters show up. The miniatures in here, once again, are another welcome addition because this one has quite a bit of miniatures in here. Uh, whether it be actual action figures, which I did have in my negatives for the previous film. Um, the rockets in here look great. The trucks, the tanks, and the buildings all look fantastic. Also, the set design is also a highlight, especially of that on Planet X. I thought that looked really great regardless of like the costumes and stuff. I thought the set design looked really good. Like, I'd honestly love to see this movie in 4K because I feel like those scenes would pop. My favorite thing in here has to be the characters and actors in here because um, they are a highlight. Like, I honestly didn't mind seeing all three of these monsters um, because I was digging the story because of these characters. I thought they portrayed it really well. Like, our two main leads in here are, like, the main reason to watch this film because their banter back and forth was great. The comedy used in here was awesome pretty good for like a Toho film in the 1960s with an American dub. But I do love the American lead in here because he does bring a lot of comedy into this film. But it sucks we didn't get to see more of him in future installments. I thought that would have been great. But it's sad because like he died at the age of 36 uh, from an apparent drug overdose, which is crazy because Nick Adams is a really great actor in here. And I'd like to see more of his roles in other films. But it's weird because he died like at age of 36, that's 11 years away from me. And our other lead in here, portrayed by, I'm going to mispronounce this, but Akira Takarada. He has also been in other Godzilla films, and it's great to see a familiar face because that's one thing that I respect about this franchise, regardless if like they're great continuations or not, or if they connect to other films. Sometimes they bring a lot of the Godzilla alumni in these films, and I thought that was great. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to be giving Invasion of the Astro Monster an overall grade of a 60%. Now, the main reason why I put this one over um, Ghidorah, the Three-Headed Monster, and King Kong vs. Godzilla is because of the two main leads in here. They were fantastic in here. It sucks that we didn't get to see more of them as a duo in future installments, but... Regardless, I think this was an okay installment in the franchise. I heard that the next few films are not an improvement, and I'm not entirely sure if I'm looking forward to them, but either way, just be on the lookout for those reviews. Um, but as always, I just want to say thank you guys for everything that you do, and I hope to see you in the next video.